even as they did not retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient. Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. Website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. Well, today I thought we'd look at some end times headlines this morning, and if we have time, uh, we'll look at uh, a few scriptures as well. Uh, but you know, the the truth is, is that these strange headlines and these things are piling up much faster than they ever have in the past. Even though I used to talk more about end times and the things going on and news type stuff back in the day, uh, there's actually more content available on a regular basis now than there ever was before. And sometimes it's even hard for me to decide what to take a look at. Uh, you know, it wasn't, uh, wasn't too long ago I was talking about how it's just... It, you want to see the zombie apocalypse, you know, just go outside, right? Like, go to your local mall, uh, go to the grocery, go drive down a, a busy road, and you'll see just people acting insane. And I think I shared with you a story of how I, I was uh, on my way to Indianapolis uh, to go to a, a, a half marathon that I was running there, and I saw a guy get out of his car and yelling and threatening another car next to him, and people just how rude people were. Well, I saw this article this morning, uh, or a couple days ago, and I was I was reading through it this morning, and I wanted to share it with you guys uh, as our first article. And uh, it's uh, it says from the it's from the end of the American Dream dot com, and here's what the headline says. It says, "Have you noticed that the crazy people are starting to take over our society?" And when I saw that headline, I was like, "Absolutely." That's absolutely what I'm seeing. And, you know, people's, it's like people have gone mad, have gone insane. And Romans tells us that even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And I think what we're seeing here is a society that has completely rejected God and says, we don't want the God of our fathers, of our ancestors. We don't want to retain this knowledge about God any longer. And as a result, they've been given over to a reprobate mind. And um, I want to say it's Second Estrus in the Apocrypha says that in the last days, intelligence will flee. Something like that. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, but I wanted, to I wanted to read this article for you guys, so uh, let's uh, dive into it. Here's what it says. It says, it's getting scary out there. In order for our society to function properly, we need to be able to assume that most people are going to behave rationally. And when I was growing up, it was generally safe to make that assumption. But now things have completely changed, no matter how hard one may try. There is simply no avoiding the hordes of crazy people that seem to be taking over our society. It is almost as if millions of us never learned basic rules for how civilized people should treat one another. Sometimes this manifests in behavior that is simply rude. Other times it manifests in behavior that is actually dangerous. And if you're really unlucky, unlucky, you will personally encounter someone that has fully embraced depravity on a level that is most of us never even want to think about. Let me give you an example of a crazy behavior that is simply rude. Not that long ago, a Reddit user posted a photograph that really freaked a lot of people out. A female plane passenger took to Reddit this week to share a horrifying photo of a stranger performing a rude act during her flight. The woman who goes by Woody Soprano on the social media platform posted an image of a traveler resting, resting their bare feet on her headrest. Though the Reddit user's face is cropped, her terrified eyes tell all with the caption, it's going to be a long flight. This was never. This woman was never in any physical danger, but this type of behavior is incredibly rude. Who would do something like that? Of course, sometimes crazy behavior does cross the line and actually becomes dangerous. For example, just considering what recently happened to a woman in Los Angeles. Hindi Van Tassel was parked in, a Holly, was parked in Hollywood after having a pleasant evening with her friends at an authentic Thai restaurant. 
Suddenly, a man randomly pulled her out of her car, dragged her out to the middle of the street, and dumped a bucket of feces on her head. Van Tessel said, and public records confirm, it was diarrhea, hot liquid. I was soaked. I was com- it was coming off my eyelashes and into my eyes, Van Tassel said. Paramedics who came to treat me said there was so much of it on me that it looked like the man was saving it up for a month. Nobody in their right mind would dump a bucket of warm diarrhea on some random woman. But if you visit the major cities on the West Coast, something like this could actually happen to you. In San Francisco alone, there have been more than 132,000 official complaints about human feces in the streets since 2008. Side note, I should note that I've seen endless articles of the about that kind of thing over the last few years. I've never talked about them because they've just never taken precedence over some of the more insane things. Uh, but I, over and over I see these articles about how San Francisco, San Francisco literally has feces running in the streets. This is what it's become in, in these places. We have literally become a nation where hordes of people use the streets as a toilet. What in the world happened to us? And if you're brave enough to go get something to eat at a local fast food restaurant, there is a chance that you might be viciously attacked by a complete nut job. A woman has been sentenced to seven years in pr- prisons for slashing a man's throat in front of his family at a Taco Bell after he asked her to stop ranting at the employees for taking too long on her food. The victim, 48-year-old Jason Luxcow, told the Oregonian Thursday that he and his wife went to Taco Bell along Highway 26 in July to pick up some food for the family when the errand took a horrifying turn, which was miraculously caught on video. Have you noticed that people seem to get triggered a whole lot more easily than they once did? Which brings me to another scripture that's uh, coming to my mind right now. I don't have it pulled up, but says something along the lines, talking about the end of the end of days, that people will be easily offended. Right? People will be easily offended, and we live in a culture where people are triggered, easily offended, and they then they lose their minds. They go insane. It's almost like they're brainwashed by the television by the GMO food going into their body. You know, you just have, you just have, you literally have the walking zombies everywhere. They're doped up on pharmaceuticals. Their mind is completely wrecked by genetically modified food and by propaganda that's pumped into their eyes hours after hours after hours. And then you get the conquer and divide lie media And you have a recipe for a complete meltdown of society. And it's all on purpose, my friends. Let me continue reading the article. These days, saying the very wrong thing to one of these crazy people at the wrong time can result in violence very quickly. A Twitter user received over 126,000 likes after she bragged about stealing a homophobic white woman's purse and spending her money on tacos. The most frightening thing about that story is the fact that more than 126,000 people decide to hit the like button. Like I said, the crazy people are literally taking over our society. Yeah, so this woman stole a purse, threw her ID in a Target trash can, spent her money on tacos and rent, tweeted about doing all of it, and 126,000 people thought that that was awesome and liked the tweet. It's, it's unbelievable. Like I said, I'm reading the article again. The crazy people are literally taking over our society. Those of us that try to behave rationally still depend on the police to protect us, but these crazies are going after them too. A video posted by CBS shows people deliberately covering an NYPD vehicle in trash on a Halloween night while a small group of residents sit by, laugh, and taunt the two officers that were left to clean up the mess. One residence is heard saying trick or treat, followed by a slur. The officers calmly show restraint as they are left to clean up the trash filled box, broken eggs, rotten food. The officers were in the midst of responding to a domestic dispute call and were upstairs at a residence long enough for their vehicle to be vandalized. It is certainly easy to 
be it is certainly certainly isn't easy to be a police officer these days. If those officers had lashed out against the residents and vandalized their vehicle, they would have probably been demonized by the mainstream media for committing police brutality. And as I mentioned above, once in a while you run into a crazy person that has completely embraced depravity. In New Jersey, authorities recently arrested a man that was harassing people who refused to let him have sex with their farm animals. Can't make this stuff up, friends. And Vice Media recently showcased a program about people that inappropriate, inappropriate insects into their sex lives. That incorporate insects into their sex lives. Yes, this is what our society is actually becoming. So why is this happening? There are certainly a lot of factors, but two of the biggest are the fact that we have completely turned away from the moral standards that this nation was once founded upon, and instead we are constantly filling our minds with complete and utter filth. Today, the average American spends more than three and a half hours watching television each day, and the material on our television is becoming increasingly depraved. A new study has a message for the many families who have said television content has grown coarser with each passing year. You're right. The study by the Watchdog Group, Parents Television Council, found a 28% increase in violence and a 44% increase in profanity over the past dec decade and shows rated TVPG. It's part of what the PTC calls concept creep. That is an increase in offensive content within a given rating compared to similar rated programs a decade ago. When we put garbage into our minds, that is eventually going to come, in, come out of our behavior. And a side note again, it reminds me of another scripture that talks about how the eyes are the window to the soul. Let's keep going. For much more on this, please visit my previous article entitled, What Do You Think is, con is Controlled by What You Watch and What You Watch is Controlled by the Elite? Unfortunately, the trends are causing all this crazy behavior in our society are likely to continue and intensify in the years ahead. This the thin veneer of civilization that we are all rely on every day is steadily disappearing. And that means things are going to become increasingly difficult for those of us who are still trying to behave rationally. And I just, that article resonates with me because it's something that I notice and something that I complain about and rant about often is people have just lost all sense. And just rudeness now is just what you expect. You expect people to, to do rude behavior because they don't know what, what what uh proper behavior is we don't teach anything proper anymore there's no shame in our culture anymore and in, in matter of fact if you point out bad behavior you are sh you are told that you are evil you're shaming that person well i'm sorry but in our culture we need some shame we need to have a little shamed and we should be ashamed of ourselves and i come to i'm sorry but We've become Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm not just talking about the sexual immorality, although that's certainly and it's, that's certainly part of it. But if you read the, you know, some of the extra biblical texts and things about Sodom and Gomorrah, they had just they had just become completely depraved. They were doing evil, they thought it was hilarious, they loved it and enjoyed it. Um, they treated the poor miserably, they they treated the sojourner that would come into the streets miserably. And horribly and horrifically, um, they were they were a civilization of in, of insanity, which is what we've become, and it's it's quite disturbing. And so I'll say it again: you don't need to watch zombie shows. You want to see zombies? All you have to do is dare to leave your home. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient. That's Romans 1, 28. Let's see if we got a couple more articles we can look at and maybe just look at some of the headlines and not read the whole thing. Mark Zuckerberg says, Brain reading, wearables are coming. But certain functions may require... Implanted devices. Man, this is right around the corner. As much as this is being talked about by the elite these days, 
And I hate to use the word elite because it's almost like we are admitting that they're above us or we're putting them on some type of pedestal. Really, it should be the sociopaths that uh, have somehow gotten power over the nations. But Mark Zuckerberg said on Thursday that he wants to work on a brain-controlling wearable and the implantable technology in Facebook's recent acquisition of CTRL Labs was a step in that direction. The goal is to eventually make it so that you can think something and control something in virtual or augmented reality, said Zuckerberg in a conversation. You know, it's it's funny. They, they act like it's so you can do these wonderful things, but at the end of the day, it's so they can control you. Anybody who gets a brain implant, I'm sorry. That's, I mean, use your mind, use your head. It's ridiculous. A giant statue of Molech has been put up right at the entrance to the Colosseum in Rome. Of course, Molech was the big deity where they, when you read about it in the Bible, they would, sacrifice their children to Moloch. Literally, they would heat it up and set their babies on it so their babies could burn to death. And the statue of Moloch, and of course it's got the all-seeing eye and triangle in the middle of its chest. I think uh, uh, um, I think uh, the scariest movie ever channel for YouTube did a story on this recently. Tourists that visit the Colosseum in Rome these days are getting quite a shock. A gigantic statue of a pagan Canaanite deity known as Moloch has been erected right at the entrance. In ancient times, those that served Moloch would literally sacrifice their children to him. And apparently this involved burning them to death. And now a massive statue of the pagan idol is the centerpiece of a new archaeological expedition. Exhibition. Exhibition at the world-famous Roman Colosseum. Yes, the exact same Colosseum where the countless numbers of Christians were martyred for their faith is now the home of one of the most monstrous pagan deities the world has ever seen. You know, it wasn't that long ago. Remember when they had the, uh, the, the Ark of Baal or whatever it was called going around everywhere? And now we have, now we have the statue of Moloch being erected. I mean, we have just went completely bonkers. Hmm. I think the last thing I'll cover with you guys today, again, in the spring I warned because of all the flooding and all the terrible things going on, there's probably going to be a food shortage that eventually comes as a result of it. Uh, Food price increases for sure because, you know, there was like 75-80% 75-80% of the grain or corn was not able to be planted, and then what was able to be planted was mostly destroyed. And then we had started to get in record cold temperatures, which killed the stuff that was supposed to be harvested in the fall. And from everything that we're seeing and reading, it looks as though we are going to have a very, very, very cold winter. And so my recommendation to you is if you do not have like a kerosene heater and some kerosene and some way to stay warm that's not reliant on government-controlled utility, I would highly recommend that you do so. Anyway, this article says, and maybe some food and water storage as well. This article says this, are you ready for a catastrophically cold winter? Here's what the mainstream media won't tell you. Experts are warning us that this will be a freezing, frigid, and frosty winter, and even though the official beginning of winter is still a month away, it is already feels like it's in much of the country right now. It certainly is in my neck of the woods, friends. It's been winter weather uh, for a couple of weeks. Over the next several days, it will literally feel like it's mid-January, and much of central and eastern portions of the United States, many areas will be hit by temperatures that are 30 degrees below normal, and heavy snow is expected in some areas of the Midwest. Unfortunately, this bitterly cold weather is coming at a very bad time for corn farmers. According to the latest USDA crop progress report, only 52% of the corn in the middle of the country has been harvested, so about half of the corn is still sitting out there. And these extraordinarily low temperatures could potentially be absolutely devastating. In In essence, 
This cold front threatens to put an explanation point on an absolutely horrific year for U.S. farmers. According to the National Weather Service, we could possibly see 170 potential daily records cold high temperatures over the next three days. And he goes on to cite some more uh, information about that. But that is, uh, that is some of the things going on in our world today, friends, that I wanted to share with you. And like I said, there's never an end of strange headlines. Let me just read a few headlines and not read the actual articles that I have also have uh, saved in the queue here. This one says, a rapid rise in actual witchcraft in America is real and frightening. You know, and, and that's another thing. Like, there's just a huge uptick in demonic activity. A huge uptick in people literally moving towards paganism and witchcraft. And it's, it's all over the TV. It's, it's all, of, all over our culture. I'd say that's something that's very uh, disturbing to me. The way people act, like we read that first article about how people have just seem to have lost it. That's very disturbing to me. And then we have this massive movement towards artificial intelligence and genetic modification. As a matter of fact, here's a couple more headlines. AI deemed too dangerous to release makes it out into the world. CRISPR, which is that technology they use to edit genes, approach to fighting cancer called promising and first safety test. And I think CRISPR, stuff like this, will be used to quote-unquote help and and have these these, uh, great benefits, but of course it'll be used for evil. Uh, Let's see, what else do I have saved here that we could look at? Some of these headlines are just too inappropriate. I mean, they're true, but they're inappropriate, too inappropriate to read over line, to read online, I feel. Oh, man. Some of the sexual things are just mind-boggling. Hmm. I mean, this is, uh, this is what we've become as a people, as a culture. May God have mercy on our souls. You know, and the best thing that we can do is to walk out a godly life and to take care of the poor and those in need and be merciful and show the Christian walk. It's the, that is the best way we can make a change. As a matter of fact, I want to spend five minutes if I can. I just want to read about the separation of the sheep and the goats. And I'm going to try to do this quickly because we're running short on time. But we'll go to Matthew 25, uh, verses 31 through 46. So I want to just read that real quickly here. Here's what it says, King James Bible. When the Son of Man shall come in glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon, his, sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king shall say unto him on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall a righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw, when saw we thee a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. All right, so... Jesus is saying that he's going to separate the sheep and the goats. And what is the separation based on? Well, he tells us what it is. He says he's going to put the sheep on his right hand, and he's going to tell them to come into the kingdom, prepared for them since the foundation of the world, and here's why they get to enter in. 
He says, because when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you took me in. When I didn't have any clothes, when I was naked, you clothed me. When I was sick or in prison, you visited me. You showed me mercy. You showed me kindness. You were charitable to me. You took care of me, even though I was naked and poor and a stranger. And the righteous will say, well, when did we do all this? And he says, what you've done to the least of these, my brethren, you've done to me. Hmm. He tells us in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Hmm. Let's continue on. Let's see what happens to the goats. And the king... Then he shall say, he shall also say to them on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. And then shall they also answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then he shall answer unto them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away in everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Jesus is saying, how you treat those in need, how you treat those who are less fortunate than yourself, how you treat the poor, the naked, the sick, the imprisoned, how you treat them, especially if they're your brethren in the faith, is the same as doing it unto Christ himself. And literally this whole conversation he's having about the separation of the sheep and goats that's the purpose of the separation, according to what he's saying here. You see, when we live this way, it's noticeable. And it's the best testament to others of the Christian faith. But when we're constantly angry and griping, we're unmerciful, unkind, uncharitable. We poorly represent Christ. The scriptures say that charity covers a multitude of sins. If you go to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, he says, Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. So even though the world's gone mad, completely insane, let us continue to be a salt and a light to the world. Let us continue to be a, a light on the hilltop, showing the mercies and the kindness and the love of Christ to those who are in need. And maybe, maybe we can change some things. Well, I am out of time this morning, my friends. I pray in the powerful name of Jesus that you have been blessed by this podcast this morning, that you've enjoyed it. And uh, I ask that you pray for it. Pray for me and my family. I really, really appreciate that. And I just thank you for those of you who supported to make it possible through Patreon subscriptions, through PayPal, or through the post office box. All of that information can be found at scriptureandprophecy.com or in a description area on the YouTube videos. Peace and grace be with all of you, and until the next time, God bless.